and welcome to Animal Weapons. Not all animals use teeth, claws or toxic chemicals as their weapons. Some, like this golden orb spider, construct elaborate traps and lures to secure their prey. And in tonight's episode, we'll look at the extraordinary array of traps and lures that are the specialty of our smaller members of the animal kingdom. For every weapon that humans have used in battle throughout history, there are animal weapons that got there first. They construct elaborate traps to ensnare. They possess all manner of projectile weapons. They use ingenious ways of successfully securing the next meal. And have even developed physical devices to lure. Luring is a weapon that ambush predators employ to entice their prey within reach. It's a weapon found in a diverse array of environments. Yet all lures have one thing in common. They are well camouflaged, opportunistic feeders. One such creature lives here in the wetlands of North America. Its lure resembles a mosquito wriggler. In the summer, they are in abundance and relished by the small swift gambusia fish that share their rivers. For the mosquito wrigglers, their weapon is sheer numbers. But the fish too are potential prey. It would seem that only a predator faster than they are could succeed in making a meal of them. Yet the hunter which has them in its sights is a large cumbersome bottom dweller, the alligator snapping turtle. The size of a football, it is the largest freshwater turtle in the world. This reptile usually forages at night, eating both plants and animals. Yet even in broad daylight, a feast of fish is too appealing to ignore. They are the perfect targets for the turtle's specialist weapon, a lure. A small pink worm-like piece of flesh. This turtle may be a slow mover, but once a gullible fish has been attracted to the bait, the massive jaws close like a steel trap. Predominantly a nocturnal forager, the snapping turtle's lure provides an opportunity for supplementary feeding during the passive hours of the day. A weapon that gives it an edge in competition for scarce food resources. Lures are found not only in river systems, but in the oceans too. In this watery world where fish have become super predators, competition is fierce. Each must somehow have a weapon that enables it to exploit its place in the ocean. And while it seems there's a constant parade of potential prey, to take your share and survive, you have to be faster, stronger, or perhaps better camouflaged. The 
Great Barrier Reef is home to more than 2,000 different fish species, each with their own specialised weapons. It is this specialisation that enables each to eke out a living in this competitive environment. This striped anglerfish has forsaken the powerful swimming tail and streamlined body of the pursuit predators for modified fins that function as hands and a body that sits comfortably on the ocean floor. Without the ability to chase fish, this angler entices fish to come to it. Its most specialised feature is its fishing rod, actually a modified spine from the dorsal fin, complete with a flap of tissue that wiggles like live bait. For the lure to be effective, it must be the only part of the fish that is conspicuous. Intricate patterning and feathery outgrowths break up its body line. It takes on the appearance of algae encrusted rock, even swaying with the motion of the current. Its hand like fins act as stabilizers and add leverage for the strike. The cavernous mouth is large enough to handle prey the angler's own size. The angler is selective, avoiding luring toxic prey or potential enemies. The explosive attack occurs in 1 50th of a second. By violently swallowing, prey is sucked in along with a rush of water. To ensure that water heads straight for the stomach, it exits behind the front fins. It's a weapon that works well for this little fish, giving it the opportunity to feed on prey that would be too fast to pursue. To successfully ambush your prey, you have to be a master of deception, to employ some form of camouflage or other disguise so that your prey suspects nothing. This death adder down here not only has the ability to camouflage itself, but can also sit motionless for hours. And it's these attributes that enable it to employ its master weapon, a lure. The death adder is a short, robust reptile, far less streamlined than its relatives. Its scales are coloured to blend in with forest leaf litter. This camouflage enhances the effectiveness of its lure. But not all creatures are tempted. Although venomous, its venom is not as potent as many of Australia's front-fanged snakes. But it does have extremely long fangs and is a copious venom producer. Using its tongue, it seeks out the pathways of its prey through chemical detection. A lizard basks nearby its body flattened against the rock to absorb maximum heat. 
From the corner of its eyes, movement catches its attention, perhaps potential prey. The lizard moves closer to inspect, oblivious to the trap that awaits it. The death adder snaps with incredible speed, another of its hunting attributes. Its extra long fangs hold the lizard firmly in its jaws, while the venom takes its paralyzing effect. The death adder has an energy efficient weapon, but one which allows them to feed only when prey ventures close enough and succumbs to their luring. Some creatures simply need ambush alone to secure their prey, without a lure or any active involvement. They rely totally on the effectiveness of their camouflage, so as not to reveal their presence. Here in these tropical forests, there lives a spider that has an uncanny resemblance to the flowers that it frequents. It hides deep within the nectar-laden blossoms and waits for butterflies to be attracted by the scent. Its weapon is not a web, but its camouflage. Butterflies see light and colour in the ultraviolet spectrum. Shades contrasted against green signal flowers, and flowers signal a nectar source. Colour and scent advertise a plant's existence to attract pollinators such as butterflies. The crab spider takes advantage of this free advertising by becoming a discreet part of the flower's lure. It simply becomes an indistinct part of the UV image of the flower petals. Once a butterfly begins to feed, it grabs the insect in its front claws and administers a venomous bite. Much smaller than the butterfly, the spider has no need to devour the entire animal, but sucks its body juices. Its ambush is dependent on its ability to deceive its prey. Other creatures ambush their prey using traps as their weapons. Many are the creation of small sedentary predators. What they lack in mobility they make up for in structural ingenuity. When you're half the size of a fingernail, your legs are barely strong enough to carry you, and you depend on prey that's almost your own size, survival depends on a weapon other than speed. And in the case of the antline larvae, that weapon is a deadly pitfall trap. No larger than a paperclip, this voracious little predator has jaws almost as large as its body. They function as a front-end loader, grasping and tossing pebbles out from the bottom of its funnel-shaped chamber. The sides of its pit are stable, but steep enough to collapse under the slightest weight. Antlions often build pits in clusters, turning the ground into a veritable minefield for passing prey. The antlion now simply sits and waits. Even for a slater with many sets of legs, the fine loose sand provides no traction and it flounders helplessly towards the antlion's jaws. They function like hypodermic syringes, both injecting venom and then sucking out the prey's soft body contents. 
The same feeding method used by other trap builders, the spiders. Spiders may not be the super athletes of the animal kingdom, but they do have the ability to weave elaborate silken traps, strategically positioned to capture their unsuspecting prey. Webs can be simple in design, like that of this two-spine spider, or more complex, like the web of the golden orb weaver, a species found throughout the tropical and subtropical regions of the world. This spider's web is known to be among the strongest of all webs. For its diameter, it has a greater tensile strength than steel. Yet it still retains its elasticity, stretching twice as far as the same length of nylon. Such is the remarkable composition of these silken threads that while prey sticks on contact, the weaver of the maze can move freely. They are designed not in a random fashion, but precisely positioned to be in the flight path of insects. Orb weavers are prolific producers of silk, able to spin out almost a kilometre in less than 10 minutes. Some is used to wrap prey into food parcels to be accessed when needed. With the very tips of their legs poised on the strands, spiders can detect the slightest vibrations which signal potential food or possible danger. Webs are both an elaborate trap and an alarm system. Like most spiders, the orb weaver's web is the key to its livelihood its weapon for survival. The Porsche is exceptional among spiders. It uses stealth as its weapon, with other spiders as its victims. It can outwit its dangerous prey by penetrating the protective webs that surround them. Both a stalker and a mimic, it uses many forms of deception. Deliberate and jerky movements mesmerise other spiders on its approach. They don't register the arrival of a potential predator. By strumming the web with its legs, it can imitate the vibrations of a gentle breeze or the struggles of an ensnared insect. The Porsche's extraordinary weapon allows it to prowl where other hunters would fear to tread. The Porsche moves on the fine silk. And although twice the weight of the resident spider, it shows no reaction to the intruder. One hesitant step after another, the Porsche makes its final approach. Remarkably, it has devised a way of tight web walking without detection. Once within reach, the Porsche makes a final leap. And this spider meets its end in the jaws of one of the forest's masters of deception. What makes the Porsche's weapon so remarkable is that it can walk on many different types of webs. 
Probably the most complex and chaotic of all spiders' webs are that of the redback. And never more so than when a female is in the protective care of egg sacs. The redback is one of the world's most venomous spiders. Yet she is blind and cannot see an approaching predator. But her highly developed ability to sense movement on the web is both her weapon of defense and attack. Surprisingly, redbacks too are one of the Porsche's prey but not without great risk to both species. A redback's web is a labyrinth of silken threads, a complex alarm system. The Porsche's four sets of eyes are focused on her targets. After weeks in the safety of their silken chamber, the redback spiderlings emerge. A most vulnerable time for them, even under the guard of their vigilant mother. These young spiders are known cannibals and will readily attack and kill their siblings. But today, their main threat is not from their own kind, but from the young Portia. Only weeks old, it is poised to attack. While a fully grown Porsche would tackle the adult redback, this youngster waits for a less risky source of food to become available. One stride in the wrong direction could spell certain death. The redback senses the intrusion. She moves her egg sac deep within the maze of trip wires, making the Porsche's opportunity for attack even more precarious. the delicate young continued to emerge. Her inexperience puts her at a disadvantage, as does her size. Such weight on the fine threads makes navigating difficult. She must mimic the vibrations caused by the spiderlings and also keep her distance from the adult. Although born with an innate ability to web walk, she is still refining her skills. A mistake would come at a high price. Newborn redbacks are already armed with venom, yet their tiny fangs are not strong enough to inflict a deadly bite. 
Their defence is safety in numbers and an inherited skill of moving quickly along their silken highways. But the Porsche must move slowly and cautiously. For like an intruder weaving through a maze of movement sensors, a false move would activate the alarm. Where other creatures would become entangled, she moves undetected, awaiting her opportunity to snatch a victim from its web. Finally, her efforts are rewarded. Some creatures use a weapon that extends their own reach. They are projectile weapons. The chameleon is an unusual reptile found throughout Asia and Africa. Its camouflage is highly sophisticated. Not only does its green colouring blend with the shades of the forest, but it is able to make rapid colour changes as it moves from one shade of green to another. With its strange gripping feet and hands, it moves freely through the foliage. Its tail, too, is prehensile, able to grasp twigs and branches when its limbs are needed elsewhere. With highly sophisticated eyes, it seeks out insects. Able to swivel independently, they enable the chameleon to look both in front and behind at the same time. They see the world both three-dimensionally and telescopically. Jerky movements conceal its passage, becoming part of the swaying motion of the leaves. But such a disguise can get the chameleon only so far. Once it has an insect in its sight, it employs the weapon that sets it apart from all other reptiles, a javelin-like tongue. Most of the tongue is a long tube of muscle. Stored in a coil in the base of the mouth, the muscle rests against a hard, bony spike. By contracting the muscle, the tongue shoots out at speeds of up to 1 16th of a second and with extraordinary accuracy. With a sticky knob at the end, prey almost half its own weight sticks like glue. It is an impressive modification of animal physiology, designed to secure prey that always seems to be just out of reach. Beneath the sands of the tropical regions of the world, another creature uses a projectile as its primary weapon. Surprisingly, it's a simple snail, yet its weapon is as effective as a venom-loaded harpoon. 
The geographer's cone shell is one of the most beautifully adorned of all the cones. Yet while its appearance is attractive, its weapon is deadly. By day, the cone shell simply becomes part of the rubble of the coral reef floor, its fleshy body safely tucked into its shell. But at night, when colours become muted and most fish are sleeping, it becomes an active hunter. It slithers fluidly through the sandy ocean floor, looking much like the many harmless shellfish that are also active by night. Many cone shells feed on simple worms and have no need for venom or a projectile weapon to secure their prey. But the geographer's cone feeds on fast-moving fish. Using a siphon which extrudes from its fleshy body, it tastes chemicals in the water, detecting fish from some distance away. Once a fish of edible size has been located, the cone slowly launches its orange proboscis, the projectile armed with a minute venom-loaded tooth at its tip. Amazingly, the unsuspecting fish sits motionless as the cone probes around. Like a harpoon, the tooth is barbed at the end. Struggles are short-lived, for the venom paralyzes within seconds. The cone dilates its fleshy mouth and swallows the fish whole. The cone shell's venom is so potent that it is also deadly to humans. Despite this, other than its prey, few other creatures become victims of the cone's deadly projectile, for it is an offensive weapon. When threatened, the cone merely draws itself back into its protective shell. One creature uses a projectile weapon that is not part of its body but part of their environment. Within the rivers and streams throughout the tropics, there lives an animal that has a projectile weapon as sophisticated as a high-powered rifle. While most fish feed on what lives in the water, the archer fish can attack those that linger above the surface. They have successfully extended their hunting grounds not by leaping out of the water, but by firing water bullets at insects from below. Like an underwater sniper, they are not conspicuous to their targets. Even as they approach within shooting range, their movements are masked by the reflections on the water's surface. When preparing to fire, they press their flexible tongues against a groove on the roof of their steeply pitched mouths. This forms the directional barrel of their pistol. The rapid compression of their gills provides the explosive force, 
to launch their high-powered water bullets at an impressive 60 metres per second. But their modified mouths alone are not enough to ensure an accurate aim. Because they always shoot from underwater, they must first solve a complex problem of physics. Where the target appears to be may not actually be where it is. And so their eyes have become a vital component of their weapon, able to correct for the way light bends as it enters the water. An unrivaled sharpshooter, at distances of less than a metre, their aim is invariably lethal. Unique in the animal kingdom, the archerfish has an innovative weapon of rare and unparalleled design. The echidna is a creature that appears very well protected, and it is. It has a back full of very sharp quills, but this is a defensive weapon. When it comes to offensive attack, the echidna's weapon is in its mouth. Found only in Australia and Papua New Guinea, it is one of a handful of animals, including aardvarks and anteaters, that feed exclusively on social insects. Teeth are useless weapons against such tiny prey, so in the echidna they have disappeared. Instead, they have evolved a highly specialised projectile tongue to lap up ants and termites. Its sensitive snout has the ability to detect their movements as tiny electrical impulses. But its prey too have their own defences. An angry swarm of ants armed with stings and biting mandibles are a force to be reckoned with. So, echidna specialise in less formidable insects, especially termites, of which Australia has over 200 different species. Some build fortresses to protect themselves from the elements and from predators. In Australia's top end, they may tower over seven metres. Inside, millions of termites are hidden away in pencil-thin, twisting galleries. The echidna's challenge is accessing them. The first line of attack is its powerful front legs, armed with shovel-like claws which can rip through the earthen walls. Now its remarkable projectile weapon comes into play. As long as its own body, it has phenomenal flexibility, able to navigate the labyrinth with ease, even folding backwards on itself. Termites caught in its sticky mucus are ground between horny pads in its mouth. 
echidna's projectile tongue gives it access to a plentiful and consistent supply of food. Echidnas, while not great in number, are widespread, have ancient lineage and live a long life. A legacy of the effectiveness of their weaponry. Well, whether they be sticky webs, pit traps, projectile tongues or water bullets, animal weapons are undeniably ingenious in their design. It's extraordinary to think that a simple spider could construct a substance with the tensile strength of steel, or that a humble fish could solve a complex problem of physics, but they do. That's all for this episode of Animal Weapons. Goodbye for now.